Earlier in the show, we paid tribute to a former governor and tree farmer. Now you're about to meet once again the 2020 Tree Farmer of the Year. He's a retired farmer, has hosted conservation workshops, and shares what he knows with other landowners. Here's Zach Ashmore. Well, I originally was a livestock farmer and uh, cattle and hogs, and uh, but the last number of years I've uh, set more of the pasture in, uh, in trees and, and actually I'm a full-time tree farmer now. David Hill's family began tree farming in 1976. Throughout that time, a slow transition from livestock to loblolly pine, overseen by David and his father, and assisted by forestry programs have made him a success. Well, I was raised on the land, and uh, my father was a, was a small farmer, row crop dairy farmer at one time, and then uh, in the 50s, I, I used to go with him and he'd uh, cut a big oak log and carry it to the sawmill to get, to get lumber, and then uh, later on, uh, our extension, our 4-H club extension, had a tree planter, and I was about 14 or so. That was in uh, probably 59, 1959 or so, and then uh, he took some 4-H clubbers out and we planted trees. And so that was kind of my first taste of, uh, of, of planting pine trees, and I reckon it just hung with me. It was his dedication to proper forest management that's made him this year's Mississippi Tree Farmer of the Year. Most of his family's former pasture and farmland now holds acres of beautiful, well-managed pine woods. If you held on to the land, you had to make it produce. Since physically I got down and wasn't able to run cattle anymore, I, uh, the trees were the next viable option. You know, used to, the trees were just something that grew in the woods. Now you manage trees similar to what you would manage another crop, and, and, uh, and that's certainly so with, with uh, this tree farm. Well, I began working with his father in 1984. Helping Mr. Hill is Robbie Howell, consulting forester whose relationship with the Hill family goes back to the beginning of their journey transitioning to tree farming. He was there when David's father, the late Mr. Maurice Hill, along with his son, needed advice on getting started. Well, David is, uh, he's easy going, uh, he, he's, he's uh, real level-headed, um, you know, and I think he, he's very uh, environmentally conscientious, uh, he's very concerned about the uh, land use and, and try to do things that in, in the right kind of way. The income on the property is important. But it's also important to David to see that the land is well cared for and, and the roads are properly maintained. And, and, you know, he's willing to spend the extra effort and money to try to, to, to keep the, the family forest holdings in, in good shape and uh, not just, uh, not kind of a one-way street, you might say. Of course, like I said, you've got to realize I was raised in the, in the woods, so to speak. Uh, uh, I could walk about a mile behind my house and still be on my grandfather's land. So I mean, you know, land and was was a part of me when I was growing up. The the type of land you have dictates kind of what you do. I think we had a commissioner, Jim Buck Ross, at one time said that, uh, and I agreed with him. Said some land need to be growing trees. Some need to be in pasture and some need to be in row crop. And I certainly agree with him on that. In addition to tree farming, Mr. Hill is also president of the Prentice County Forestry Association and has retained that position since its beginning. I was the only full-time far tree farmer and, and nobody else wanted it. So, so that, by virtue, uh, I've, I've had it all these years and I, I see about uh, uh, getting quality programs, and I work with our uh, extension agent in Boonville, put these programs on. Mr. Hill also credits the extension service for his success. He says it was invaluable to getting him started and on the right track. I've been to different little seminars in uh, Corinth and New Albany and uh, uh, down at the North Mississippi Experiment Station. I, 
I attended a seven week uh, course by satellite from Clemson. So to learn, you need to take advantage of a lot of these courses that Extension can offer. But there's a lot of different programs like how to thin your pines or, 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 or how to do your taxes, you know, with timber taxes and stuff. So there's, there's a whole big list of, of Extension programs that, that can, be, uh, can be taken. The fact that we have a vehicle that will allow you to, to give some accolades to people who are doing a good job. I know it means a lot to David, it would have to his dad, um, and I think that that's, that's a good thing that the forest community likes to recognize. And you know, it is the landowner is the one who's out here exercising his will, you might say, over the property during his lifetime. And, and I think that if they, you know, are thinking that they have a little obligation that goes beyond their self, I think that's good. All in all, the story of David Hill is that of a devoted farmer who made a prudent decision and followed through using proper techniques learned through experience and expert advice. He's overcome hardship, handicap, and a changing world, but in the end, his sound choices have ensured success.